In today's show, we're gonna use Power Apps and Power Automate to create a SharePoint site collection. That's right, what we're gonna do is we're gonna explore the SharePoint REST API a little bit. Ooh, scary, it's not, it'll be okay. But we're gonna use a Power App to provide a bunch of inputs, we're gonna then trigger a flow, and the flow is gonna create us a SharePoint site. Magic! Should be fun. But first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys, and today we're gonna to create a SharePoint site. And we're gonna do that by taking some inputs from Power Apps, we're gonna pass them over to our Power Automate flow, and we're gonna hit the REST API, and bamo whammo, we'll have a site. Now, this is probably not an exact use case for you, but it gives us two chances, right? One is to introduce how to use the SharePoint HTTP action, because it lets you do all those SharePoint things that there's not already flow actions for. And more importantly, when we use the SharePoint REST API action, it is free, it is a standard connector, so it doesn't incur any premium licensing. So big kudos to learning that one. And then two, it just started to kind of get our brains wrapped around what is out there and what is possible, because like I said, you're not gonna build this exact app, but understanding the mechanics of how this app works will set you on the path so you can explore and build your own app. Sound like fun? I thought so. So let's just switch over to my desktop and take a look. Here's the Power Apps app. Power Apps app, yeah, I think so, that I built to do the inputs for creating a site. So just real quick, we're gonna be like, all right, title, first demo, we did it, URL, chewy12345, have a drop down to choose template site or communication site, and I have a drop down that uses all my Office 365 users, and it defaults to the logged in user, which is me, so we can just say create site. So there you go, this is gonna process, this is actually running a Power Automate flow behind the scenes for us, so we'll give it just a second to process. All right, and it should just be about done. I think it is, boom. And there's our site, yay! Look at that, Power Apps creating a SharePoint site for us. So how does that work? So the way that it actually works is over here in our Power Apps, this is just a normal Power App, just a bunch of text inputs, drop downs. And when you click on create site here, it's going to run a flow, which we're going to go show you in a few minutes. And then once it gets done, it did a launch to open up the SharePoint site. So I didn't have to open it myself because I'm lazy. And then of course, over here on the right, we have advertisements for my upcoming live SharePoint and Power Apps, Power Automate and Power BI class. Yay! Or on demand. Yay! Take my class so I can quit doing commercials for it. Okay. Anyway, so... How does this work? How did this all happen? That's the real question. And so I just did the demo and I decided I didn't like it the way I did it. So I'm deleting, I deleted it. So I'm redoing this portion of the class or the video. So what I want to do is I want to go over here to flow and so introduce you to some new stuff. So we're gonna make a new flow. And you know me when we're doing a new flow or I'm trying to learn something, I just like the instant flow so I can just manually trigger them like that. And we'll just call this SP demo. And we'll say create. So manually trigger a flow. All right. So to create a SharePoint site, you just need one action. And it is just, if you search for HTTP, you will see that there is a send an HTTP request to SharePoint. Now there's an important thing to note here. Notice that it does not say premium over here. All these other HTTP ones, they say premium. So that's important from a licensing standpoint. Everything that I'm gonna show you here is able to be done without any type of premium license. So send an HTTP request to SharePoint, and now it asks me all these questions about URIs and methods and bodies and things I don't know. So I went over to the internet, and what I did was I searched for um, create a SharePoint site with REST API, right? So let's just do it, let's just search. So I said, SharePoint REST API create site, right there at the top auto suggestion it drops you into a Microsoft document. And the reason I'm showing you what I searched for because there's about a gazillion things you can do. And so I'm showing you one, but as you start to you know, have to search for your own, it's kind of handy to see how I got here. And so if you look in here, it's like, hey, to create a modern site, you need to run this JSON, right? Oh, JSON, oh, scary. It's not, it's just a hipster way of spelling JSON. Uh, it's really just text, right? So if we go down here, we're like, all right, well, cool, I see a bunch of stuff. So if we go look at the flow, it says, hey, what site address do you want? So for this, because we wanna create a new site collection, we can actually choose any site collection we have access to. So choose my Power Apps videos, I can choose my regular one, I'll just do Power App videos, it doesn't matter. 
Now method. So this is when you talk to an API, this is, you know, are you getting data? Are you putting some data? Are you posting? Are you patching? Are you deleting? I don't know. Back over here, the documentation. Method, post. Oh, okay. I don't have to care. Just put in post. URI, well, if we look over here, it's like, hey, here's the endpoint. This is the thing that does what you want. All right, control C, back over here, control V. All right, I don't know what it says, don't care. We can go over here, oh, right here. So it has um, some header stuff. Turns out we don't need any of that, so I'm not gonna bother with it. And then down here for the body, it's like, here's the body, cool. Copy, paste that right here. All right, so then now, you know, once again, we don't, have, let's not be afraid of the JSON, let's just read it. So title colon, so title equals communication site one. Well, I don't want that, I want this to be Chewy was here is my site title. URL, Contoso share. Well, no, 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 I'm not Contoso. I am Shane's Cows, right? And you are not Shane's Cows, you are something else. And then site slash, well, com site one. I don't want com site one. I want Chewy Barks. I don't know. Language ID. Now, notice up here with all these string ones, they were all in double quotes, but language ID is not. So 1033, that is my version of English but you could change that to yours, but notice it's an integer, so just change the numbers, don't add any quotes around it. Share by email enabled false, I don't even know what that is, but okay. Classification, low business impact, clearly. Description, um, please work. <laughs> Web template, site page publishing pound zero. What? Let's go back over here. Oh, look, communication site. So site, page publishing pound zero would make us a communication site. If we wanted to make a team site like we did a minute ago, that would be STS pound three. Okay, I, I don't need to care what it does, I just need to know what it wants. So we'll stick with site publishing page pound zero. Now site design ID 6142 blah, 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 blah. Um, yeah, okay, let's go back over here. Let's look for 6142 blah, blah, blah. Oh. Oh, so look at that. So that will create a communication site and then that would make that a showcase site. If you want to make it a topic site, it'd be this. If you want to make it blank, it'd be that. Oh, interesting, right? So we can control the different types. I'm not going to change it because I'm fine with a showcase site because I don't know the difference between a showcase site and a topic site anyway. Right? I mean, maybe I do, but you know what I mean. I don't care. So I just want to see one create, so we'll leave that alone. Now, Keep in mind, right, this is, could be a rabbit hole that you go down. Maybe you're immediately saying, Shane, we have our own site design IDs. Can I apply those? Sure. Or Shane, how do we create our own site design IDs? I don't know. Go read the documentation, right? Go search for SharePoint REST site design ID or create your own site design ID, right? In the Microsoft Docs, I read it earlier today, there is Microsoft Docs that explain how to create your own site designs, use your own site designs, and then pass your own IDs. Not that's something we're going to do in this video, but something you guys can do. Owner, well, that's an email address. That is not my email address, and that is not a valid email address in my environment. So we'll just put in mine. Web template extension ID. I don't know. Let's we'll just leave it be, see what happens. Cool, all right. Well, let's hit save. Oh, whoa, whoa sorry, I, I nodded off. It, it has been taking so long to save this week. I don't know why. So now we'll say test. This is the beauty of manually triggering. We can just click this button and you know answer a bunch of silly questions here but then be able to get to testing without worrying about it, without creating fake data, without worrying about breaking existing processes. I always recommend you learn and play with a manually trigger flow, because once we get this step working, oh, let's hit continue and run the flow. Once you get this step working though, then you could just go insert this into your real flow, right? You, you learn here and then you take this and apply it where you want. Oh, let's hit done. How many button clicks does it take? Your flow ran successfully though. Oh, that's awesome. Expand this out. Here's the inputs. We just made all those. We don't care about those. There's the outputs. Oh, and there's the site URL. Awesome, let's copy that. Let's open a new browser tab. Let's paste that in. Chewy was here! Look at that, we made a SharePoint site. Now, this is important, right? The outputs, I mean, obviously we already knew what the URL was gonna be because we had specified it above, but as you guys start thinking, right? Because some of you are thinking, oh, well, Shane, how do I know if this was successful? How do I blah, 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 blah? 
start looking at the outputs, right? Maybe in a future video, we'll talk about how to parse this out. But for right now, we just want to create one and see it work. And we have done it. So, so there you go. So reading some fun little documentation does, right? So you want to delete one? Well, look, there's delete. You want to get it status? You know, all of these fun things are over here that you can do. And so these are, you know, managing the sites. What well, turns out though, like where I've used this in the past is to create lists and libraries and add columns and modify navigation and add content, right? All things that we, uh, you know, have covered in some of my different uh, actual training classes that will eventually filter their way out here. So leave comments and scenarios you want to see below. But if you're like, hey, Shane, how would I do create a, 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 um, a, a list, right? I don't know. I'd go up here. I'd be like, SharePoint, REST, API, create a list. All right. So then I go down here, look a little bit, working with lists and list items with REST. And then look, so you find your site, you need the list. Well, this is getting the properties, working with lists, create a list. There you go. So there's... There's the pieces. So you would just do the same cut and paste and fill in the blanks like we just did. Now, you might have to do some more searching. Like maybe, you know, I don't know. I think base template 100 is the custom list. Um, so if you want to create a calendar list, you might have to use a different base template. So then you need to go search for what is the base template. But you, you, you found it, right? You are at the edge. You now understand that this rabbit hole is there for you to explore. And also note that a lot of this stuff is, or not a lot of stuff, all of this stuff is running as the account that is triggering the flow. So you don't need special permissions, right? Chewy has permissions that are a company to create sites, so you can create sites. Or in certain um, sites, Chewy has permission to create lists, so he can use this API to create lists, right? You don't have to be some fancy global admin or anything like that to do it. Now, another thing I want you guys to understand is you're starting to explore the rabbit hole, right? And in just a second, I'll go show you the, the flow that backs the Power App. So don't, 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 don't check out on me yet. But one thing I want you to understand is you're looking through this stuff. You're going to see some stuff show up as SharePoint REST API v1. So this is the API we've been using for years and years and years. And it's pretty solid. It's pretty well documented. There's probably a million blog articles out there on every question you might have. You will occasionally see that there is a SharePoint REST API v2. So... The SharePoint REST API v2, it is leveraging the graph service, right? So graph.microsoft.com. So what's important to understand is that when you're using API v2, that you can't call the graph for free. This is kind of a, let's call it a bug in the way that Flow is built today. In order to interact with a graph API, you have to use the HTTP connector or action, which is premium. But a lot of the graph API calls are backed by SharePoint calls. So this article kind of walks you through and starts to explain to you how to think about that and look at it. But as a rule of thumb, when I'm looking for ways to do it, I look at V1 scenarios first because most of it's all there. And I know that that all has, it works for the SharePoint HTTP action. Some of the graph calls, or none of the graph calls work with it, but some of the graph calls do have an equivalent that can be ran via this SharePoint URL. So, so there is some weirdness there. Just keep that in mind. If you, if this is the start of your URL, it, it's going to cost you a premium license. If this is the start of your URL, you can use the HTTP action. That's the same reason that we talk about. You can use Project uh, Web Access, right? PWA, Project Online. You can use the Share T SharePoint HTTP action to talk to it because it is fronted by SharePoint. So. The project connector in Flow is terrible. I didn't say that. Yeah, you have no proof. But um, but you use the REST API calls to get to all the data directly, and then it's not, you know, once you get over that, it's not too bad. Okay? So lots more to learn. I would love comments below of what you want to see or hear me talk about more. And then keep in mind, I also have the training classes that have some of it. Okay. So... Now that we've kind of seen that, right, we've seen this. And so let's look at the flow. You know, th this was our simple one we built together. This is the reason I redid the demo. I wanted to show you a simple one before I showed you the more complex one. So if we go back to my flows, I have one here called create a SharePoint site. And so then if we get over here, we're going to see that all I did was I made all of these uh, send an HTTP request to SharePoint calls. But all of these properties are just ask in Power Apps. 
right? And so we've done that in several different flows uh, videos over the time, but it's where you go in, you say ask in Power Apps, and then when you connect it to Power Apps, then you're able to suck it in. I also threw a delay here. Um, the reason I did this is when you create this, it finishes, it takes three or four or five or 10 seconds for the SharePoint site to actually be able to be accessed. So the idea for me was I did this, I delayed 10 seconds, so my flow always takes at least 10 seconds, and then it returns back to Power Apps. And so then when it returns to Power Apps, then it does that launch and the URL was always there. So this, this is probably not something you would actually do, but it made it easier for me because that way I, weren't, I wasn't trying to open uh, a SharePoint site that wasn't quite done being provisioned yet. Um, also over here, you're gonna see, let me show you a little bit of you know, my run history. You can see I've got some failures. So like this failure, I was trying to figure out, could I set the secondary contact? So if you look up here, I added a field called secondary contact and put in my email address. Guess what? It doesn't work. So the flow actually failed with a bad request because it was like, hey, you're passing me data that doesn't exist or it, I'm not looking for. So that's one way it fails. The other way that it'll fail Let's go back over here for a second and let's try to create this SharePoint 12345 or Chewy 12345 that already exists. So we're gonna say create site. My thing's gonna run, I'm gonna pause for a sec. So that's where the 10 seconds is annoying. So Power Apps is happy, right? It's like, oh, everything worked. But if we go over here to my run history, we're gonna see that it succeeded also. Well, then what's the problem, Shane? Well, if we go in here just a little further and we go to, uh, the send request, here's the data we sent. And so you can see that it actually, um, the site was already there. And so it, it created it, but it created it kind of over the top. So you're gonna see some different bad behaviors. So if you're gonna do a process like this, maybe you need to have a, a, a way to make sure the site already exists ahead of time. You know, you're gonna have to start thinking about these things. You're gonna need a way to maybe check your outputs and see what happened in here, you know, what is the site status that came back and, and how did it all behave? Um, so things to think about, you know, you've got a lot of new power doing this REST API thing. And I don't want you to think that like my video is just the perfect end. It's not, I mean, it is perfect, but 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 it's not the end of the story. It's, it's the opening of Pandora's box. It's not the closing of the box. Um, the other thing I wanna remind you guys is if you just want this site and this flow, like you just want because everything here is turnkey, you would just have to change um, this URL to be your URL and everything would work. Um, if you wanted to do that, uh, you can go out to the curated library over at training.powerapps911.com. You can download this app, this video, and all the other apps I build there. So a lot of fun stuff there. Okay, that's enough, blah, blah, blah. Leave comments. Tell me what more you guys want to see. I, like, does this interest you? Does going down this rabbit hole fun? Or are you thinking, eh, I don't know about all this. This is a little too, you know, low code, no code for you. That's okay. So, cool. All right, I guess with that, I'm just gonna say thanks and have a great day. Before you go, be sure to click on the subscribe button over here so that way you'll be notified when new videos come out. If you need any help or you want to work together, whether your problem's big or small, check us out at Power Apps 911. We do it all. I rhymed. Or if you're looking for more formal training offerings, we have those linked up here somewhere. So check them out. Thanks and have a great day.